Sunday, August 21st. Man, where has the year gone? Uh, I tell you, sometimes I feel like they have flipped the switch on us. So, took some time off. There is a wise passage that says, Be still, O my soul, and know the serenity of God. Sometimes you just got to turn the volume down, folks, and begin to hear that inner voice um, that uh, all too often gets lost. So anyway, this is becoming very interesting, is it not? We have two vortexes. Yeah, I know I said vortices, but you know what the great thing about language is? is that the fact that you could hear it and point it out. So, us Southerners at times, we just sometimes talk funny. But look at this, folks. I find this real interesting of what's going on here. I mean, the fact that this storm here continues. Now, what is it going on? 11 days, I believe. We now see another vortex forming here as well but i found this interesting it seems that there's been a split we know in the southern jet stream but what I found is interesting is here off of uh, South America, it looks like it's almost hitting a wall, doesn't it? And it's splitting, going... Now, this is the southern part of the jet stream, correct? And it's making a U-turn coming back up here, and then it splits off and goes back and gets caught into the new vortex... This is the HD model of this program, and actually it's pretty cool, to be honest with you. So we have this over here, right? And then it takes up here, it looks like it's hitting a ridge, falls down into this trough here, boom, gets sucked down into the black hole. But then look what's happening here. It's like we can almost begin to see what's happening if this is a continuation of what took place over here. Now, so while I was looking at this, I said, well, why don't we look at the temperature? And this got a little disturbing. So pay attention to the temperature here. All right, minus 47, minus 65. I actually got a temperature down in, uh, let me pull this out a little bit so we can actually get a little bit more. So yeah, look at that, minus 79.3. That's just about 112, minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit. But that Okay, cold air, Antarctica. Yeah, they've had winter down there. You expect there to be cold air. So I looked at these vortexes. Notice that it's minus 40.4, so roughly about minus 55 uh, Fahrenheit. Same thing over here. Look at that. Almost identical. In fact, it is. So we have identical temperatures in both of these vortexes, these storms. But this is what really got me. So I clicked on up here, right? The air, now I know this is at 10 millibars, I get that, but the air at the equator is colder than the air down in the southern hemisphere where these vortexes are forming I just find that really odd. And in fact, look here, again, minus 50.1 Celsius. 
just doing the math real quick, I think it's somewhere right around about a minus 64 degrees Fahrenheit. But look up here in North America, minus 40. So, sorry about that. We have a lot of uh, air traffic over us, unusual to say the least. But let me continue. So the air is colder at the equator than it is up here. Let's go right over Greenland. Minus 39. So, I don't know. Is this normal? I find it interesting to say the least. So again, so we go down here to 250. Let's see how, I don't know folks. It just seems to me that both jet streams are undulating, broken, fractured. Um, you can just see the ridges and the troughs. You know, when I look at this, I immediately get the image of a uh, kayaker uh, heading down one of the rivers here in Colorado. <laughs> that would be definitely um, a wild ride. But you have to admit, it just... So I started counting um, this morning all these troughs, ridges, and look at this. I began to see that they're all over the place. And I don't know if you want to call that a north-south. Um, I just know that this jet stream is doing some very odd things. I mean, that's a Look at this. And I think that we're going to see this as well. I was looking as well at the temperatures. And I think we can just see what the temperatures are at this level. But you can see that the equator again minus 40 yeah, it's actually colder now at this level than it was on the other I don't know I'll go, let's go down to surface temperature Well, you can really tell a lot of mixing here. Here's that storm that we saw up at the uh, 10 millibar. You can see it. And look how it hits this ridge right here. This HD version takes a little bit longer to, to load. But it's cool. Yeah. I guess the good thing is, is that this is all over uh, ocean water. But here's what I was looking at. Look, it just seems like it hits this wall and boom. And I thought as well, we had such a very unusual day yesterday. Just very, it was almost like it was in October. And I want to see something here on the uh, ocean temps. Let's just go down here. Here we go. Another thing I wanted to point out. Was how far this warm water extends out into the Atlantic. Folks, that's really warm water. Um, you'd expect it somewhere right around here, the Gulf of Mexico. I've heard reports of local fishermen and emails sent to me 
um, that the fishermen are seeing the impact of this as well. Very unusual warm water. The fishing is being impacted. And here is the one email I thought that was interesting. So I don't know if you've ever gone red uh, fish, red snapper fishing, but you know you have to get out into the Gulf and it's a deep fish. Well, the temperatures at the bottom are warming up. And I just found this really unusual how much warm water is actually in the Atlantic right now. Um, I'm a novice, granted, but does this not seem just a little unusual? And then if you pull back, I believe Dr. Beckwith mentioned how much warm water, and you look at this, folks, there's a lot of warm water in the Atlantic. I, I, I did not know this. I was unaware. And when you begin to look at this, you can begin to understand um, that we're getting temperatures over here uh, as well in the uh, Pacific as well. So is this indicative of something? I don't know. But I will say this. I believe it does bear watching. All right. Uh, we'll talk soon.